So today I'm going to walk you through the full process of how to remove an old over-the-range microwave and install a new one. This is a very approachable project to most DIYers, but just a heads up, you might need an extra set of hands as you're taking off your old microwave and installing your new one because it can be a little cumbersome and heavy. And there are a few tips and tricks along the way that hopefully will reduce the amount of trips you're taking down to your home improvement store. So first up, let me show you how to remove your old over the head microwave so we can assess our back wall and make sure we're getting the correct microwave that will make for the easiest install. Now, even though you can do this job with the range staying in place, I highly recommend, especially if you're doing this by yourself, to either pull your range away from the wall, or in my case, I can just shimmy that over since it's on the end of the cabinets here. This is gonna help for the removal and install so you're not reaching over the range with a heavy load like this microwave. So do yourself a favor, set yourself up for success and get that range out of the way. So now that we have better access, what you're gonna to wanna to do is open up your cabinet above. Here's where the mounting screws are gonna go through the cabinet and that's holding this front edge of your microwave. So we'll get set up because we're gonna undo those and that's gonna to start to tilt our microwave down so we can take it off of a mounting bracket on the wall. All right, so it helps to get a little step stool so you can get up at the cabinet and get a good look at everything going on. First, let's go ahead and unplug our microwave. And then let's take a look at the mounting bolts or screws that we have going through. Here I have three, so one, two, and then three on the far side. And you'll also see they are pretty beat up. They're basically cammed out and stripped. So I'm going to want to take some time so I can remove those without damaging them any further. And my plan is to remove the far bolt here and this one here, and then get down below and support the microwave and take my impact driver and then quickly remove this one while then I support the load of the microwave and then we should be able to pull that right off the wall. So just with a simple Phillips head screwdriver, I'll remove that left side mounting screw and then move on to the right side mounting screw, leaving one still in place while I get under the microwave and support the load. Then with my impact driver, I'll remove that last one and tilt down the front edge, pulling out the power cord. Once that's freed up, then I'll lift it off the back mounting bracket. So this is also why I'm swapping this one out. It's been a rental unit for about four years and I don't think it's ever been cleaned. You got tons of caked on grease, which can be removed, you can get that off, but it's gonna take uh, some time and money. So with the parts that I had to replace, the current condition of this, not to mention, don't forget, charcoal filters need to be swapped out. So if you have a recirculating vent, which we'll talk more about here in a minute, don't forget these charcoal filters should be swapped out. Those aren't good forever. Those are something that need to be maintained so they can work appropriately and actually do the filtering function. So now let's take a look and start getting set up for our install of the new microwave. So I did mention removing that old microwave prior to getting your new one. Why would you do that? And sometimes the timing is a little challenging to do that, but it's a, if it's at your own home, you're able to remove your own microwave, have a little downtime of not having the microwave up and running, you're gonna be able to see your setup. You can see if your microwave is gonna be venting out of an actual vent or if it's gonna be a recirculation like this one. I do, I do not have an external vent, so it's just gonna recirculate that air through the charcoal filters. You can check your measurements. So the new one is also gonna be 30 inches wide. There's a very high likelihood that you have a standard 30 inch because that's gonna match your upper cabinets and also match the width of your stove. And then for the height, this is something that you wanna kinda of consider. If you want a direct replacement, maybe you have paint that you don't wanna to have to mess with because if you had a taller microwave before and now you get a shorter microwave, whether you have paint or backsplash, that might be something that you're gonna to have to deal with if you don't take the height of the replacement microwave into consideration. In this case, I'm removing a microwave that was 16 and 3 8 tall, and my new microwave is 17 and a quarter, so it's actually gonna come down slightly. I'm gonna remount the new bracket a little bit lower, 
and I'm not gonna have any painting. I don't have backsplash, but if I had backsplash, that's something I'm not going to have to account for. So this is why I like to remove the old microwave to really get a good plan of attack. So when I'm purchasing my new one, I'm making the project overall as short as possible where I don't have to do more than just installing the microwave. So let me know if you have any questions down in the comments, but now I'm going to put my new mounting bracket on the wall. So I'll go ahead and remove this old one and get set up for mounting the new bracket. Now you might have to score around your old bracket because you could have some paint that's just holding it in place. So just with a quick run through of your utility knife, you should be able to pull that off the wall without any damage. So the microwave should either come with a cardboard template like this or one or two paper templates. Here, the cardboard, I actually prefer because it has a little bit more rigidity. It's easy to hang on the wall. I don't have to tape it. So I can just kind of hold it in place. And then really, I'm just gonna confirm also my sides of the template and the cabinet are lined up. There's a few things that I'm gonna mark here is one, I'm gonna mark the center point, which is represented by this arrow. And then also, I'm just going to head and trace the bottom surface of this cardboard. Now that's gonna give me a reference line. I'm not gonna do it all the way across because actually I just want that reference line in my center point. Then I'll use a level on the bottom of the bracket to make sure everything is level and lined up. The only other two things I'll mark is I will mark A here and B. And those are just gonna be reference marks on the end of the mounting holes for your bracket. Although, how you're gonna mount your bracket is really gonna be justified by your studs and trying to hit some studs and then getting a toggle bolt in if you need to on the ends to make sure that they're secured. Then I'll go ahead and mark my studs. Now again, referencing what I had before, the studs should be located where I had screws from the old mounting plate. Although you can see there was several attempts last time to hit that stud. So my stud is really gonna be located right here and right here, which just goes through the center of that one. And then I'm gonna use this hole again for a toggle bolt. All right, so now I will take that bracket. I have my center mark and I have my center triangle, so I'm gonna line those up. I'm gonna match up this end on the line that I trace on, on the bottom of the template. And then I see my stud here, which actually is gonna be right here in the center of this holding tab, which is okay because there will be clearance for the microwave to clip on here. Even though we're gonna have the head of this lag going through and sticking out slightly here. So I wanna mount that first, and then I'm gonna take my level and get my other mounting locations lined up. So now with that one lag secured in here, I'm gonna use my small torpedo level. And if you guys ever wanna reference what tools I'm using, what I recommend, how that even adapts over time, you can check the description below. And I have an Amazon store where I keep that all updated for your reference of power tools, general tools, plumbing, electrical, just anything you're gonna need around the house. So now with the bubble in the middle, I know my next stud is right here. My best alignment is gonna come from this hole right here. So that's what we're gonna to try to hit. 
And then the last toggle bolt hole was here. So I wanna get as far to the end as possible, but away from this because this is dra damaged drywall and the toggle bolt just leverages drywall to secure. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill my hole for the toggle bolt right there. Now, quick tip, before sinking this other lag, we need to get our toggle bolt straightened out. So now because I only have the one lag in place, I can move this out of the way for a second, take a 5 8 spade bit and drill the hole, which will allow the toggle to go through the wall and open up behind. So why we do the toggle bolt first is because we actually need to pass the bolt through and tighten the wing nut on the back side. Then once we have that connected, you'll go ahead and close the wing nut and press it through the wall. And you should hear a click once the wings open up behind, now you know you're ready to tighten. Now to properly tighten a toggle bolt, what you wanna do is apply a slight pressure and then tighten it and that will pull the bolt in. Now watch your fingers so you don't pinch them. Just do a slight adjustment up. Now I like to finish toggle bolts off with just a flathead screwdriver, making sure I can actually feel that, that wing nut pulling into the drywall. So it's secure, but I'm not ripping anything off. So that is great. And now all we have to do is sink our last lag screw. So now you should be at a good spot with a securely attached mounting bracket, and arguably this is probably one of the more complex parts. I would confirm once it's completely secured, you are still level, and also your distance is where it's expected for the microwave you're installing. Both of those are good on mine, so now we'll talk about drilling the holes in our top cabinet. So you can use your template again. In this case, it's the same piece of cardboard. Sometimes it's a different one. It usually will reference rear wall, so you know you have it pointed correctly. And then I'm gonna line up those center points. And what I'm doing here is I wanna take a screwdriver and stick the screwdriver through my old mounting points. And that's just gonna confirm to me whether or not I can reuse the holes that are already in the cabinet. And unfortunately, in my case, I'm not going to be able to do that. So I'm going to have to drill more holes and kind of Swiss cheese up the bottom of this cabinet. But that is the way it goes most of the time. So making sure that the template is completely lined up, I'm going to mark the mounting screw locations with the Sharpie. And then the hole that I need to drill, I'm actually going to do a pilot hole right through the middle of the cardboard and that's going to be where I'll use a hole saw to drill a larger hole. Now I'll drill the larger holes from the top down so that the surface on my cabinets as smooth as possible and if I have any blowouts it's hidden on the bottom. So I'll go ahead and just use a pilot bit through the sharpie locations I just marked. So check your instructions, but pretty commonly use a 3 8 of an inch drill bit for the mounting screws and then an inch and a half hole saw to pass the cord through the cabinet and plug it in. But before doing that, I would recommend either your Sharpie points or your pilot holes to just check one reference dimension. And that is good. It might check out, that is, I'm just checking 10 inches. I'm supposed to have 10 inches from the back wall just to make sure I didn't have the template upside down or do something completely wrong prior to drilling more holes in this cabinet. And because this bottom surface is gonna be concealed, I'm gonna drill top down. 
again, any damage should happen down here on the bottom surface of the cabinet. So I'm now ready to finish this project off and bring the microwave over, clip it on the mounting brackets, and then secure my two mounting screws up top. You want to be sure you have everything in place before bringing it over the microwave because you're going to be limited in your range of motion and just the number of hands you have. This is a good time to call in some extra help if you need it. Also to note, if you drill the holes and they're right next to an old hole or you have to drill them a little large because they're misaligned, your normal head of the screw is going to be this width. You could get a 3 8 of an inch washer to increase the overall distance and help you cover maybe some damaged wood. Or you can go all the way up to, let's say, a quarter inch fender washer which you can see drastically increases the overall distance. So that might get you out of a pickle depending on how the bottom of your cabinet's looking. And if you had to drill the holes a little larger and, you, and these screws have a secure base to hold that front of that microwave. Most of the holding power is coming from this back bracket, but these screws do keep that front from twisting down. So they do need to be solid. Now, if all of the other steps were done correctly, this is pretty quick. So I'll clip the bottom rear corner onto the bracket, confirming that the two tabs are secured. Then I'll feed the power cord up through the inch and a half hole. And then I will hand tighten both of the mounting screws first to make sure I don't cross that thread them with my impact driver. And then go ahead and drive those home and plug in the microwave. Other than that, you can open it up, remove a few of the different stickers and cloths inside, install your rotating tray, and then also don't forget to install the charcoal filter on the bottom, and you should be done. Other than setting the clock, of course. If you guys are catching any snags with your project, just let me know down in the comments. I'll jump in and try to help you out. Now for me, I got a little bit more work to do on this laminated countertop because the end cap here has seen better days. If you wanna see how easy it is to install a completely new laminate countertop, check out this video right here and I'll walk you start to finish through the whole process. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.